Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise God. Happy Easter to you all. We're so glad to see your smiling faces in here this morning. We printed 200 bulletins thinking that we have a couple left over, and I don't think there's any left. Amen? Amen. So if you don't have a bulletin, just wait till your neighbor isn't looking and just, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just, you might have to share some, please, because we're so happy to have so many people in here. We had uh, probably last year for our 7 o'clock Easter sunrise service, I guess we had about 50, yes, and so we figured maybe, maybe we'd have 60 this morning. It was 70-plus people out there, right out there this morning, praise God. So the Lord is with us, and we are blessed to also be live streaming this morning. We welcome to all those also who are with us at home, who are watching online on YouTube. And we ask you, if you would, please, to fill out those attendance pads that are in your pew and pass those on to your neighbor. If you haven't already done that, please. And so we are blessed to be here and to assume an attitude of worship as we're blessed with our beautiful prelude. Praise God. going to go ahead. stand with us and join in our opening hymn of page prayer number 302 our opening hymn of praise is Christ the Lord is risen today
to join us as we reaffirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we're blessed with our beautiful children's message. Praise God. Okay, welcome again. Uh, I'm actually not going to do the children's message. I'm going to do the announcements. So my first announcement is a love letter that Connie Brock left me over here. It says, we have been blessed with 51 lilies, so we had to be creative with the placement. Some are also in Wesley Hall. Please make sure you take yours uh, from among any of these after the services today. Tuesday evening service. There will be no Tuesday evening service on April the 2nd. Otherwise, join us each Tuesday evening at 6.30 for a traditional service with Pastor Mijan. Our Zoom Bible study, join Pastor Mac for his Zoom on over Tuesday evening Bible study. Please be on the lookout for that Zoom link in the Tuesday church emails or call the church office to have the link sent to you. There will be no Zoom Bible study on April 16th or the 23rd due to Pastor Max taking a much needed vacation. And I know we would all like to go with you on your vacation, Pastor Mac, but please no crazy gas station stories this time. <laughs> Our Easter schedule, March the 31st, which is today, happy Easter. Uh, there will be Sunday school classes. Uh, they may meet. I know that the children and the youth are not meeting today, but if your Sunday school class is meeting, there you go. Um, the 11 o'clock service will be combined in Wesley Hall, and then the butterfly release will be shortly after that right outside of Wesley Hall. Our alpaca shoe box, this church-wide project, supports the Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child Ministry. So for the month of April, we're looking for donations of plastic cups with lids, bandanas, lightweight scarves, um, hair accessories, those type of items. The collection carts are in the hallway outside of Pastor Mac's office. Our 2024 Festival of Tables is May the 11th in Wesley Hall. The doors will open at 2 p.m for a delightful afternoon. The dessert bar will be open at 2.30 to offer some delectable desserts. I promise I'll try to keep my dad away from that. Tickets are $10 uh, and are on sale beginning April the 14th. Put this fun event um, on your calendar and I'm also hoping to get Mr. Fred to dress in his 70s clothes because that is the theme of our table. So we'll see what happens. Our coffee time for the month of April, many thanks are extended to our Francis Major Circle for hosting and providing our coffee time refreshments. Our blessing boxes, our box is in desperate need of donations. We appreciate any donations, but we really um, uh, especially need Vienna sausages, tuna packets, canned spaghetti. I like um, ABCs and one, two, threes. Those are really good. Uh, thank you for the donations. Our dinner and dessert auction. This is our third annual LUMC youth dinner and dessert auction. Join us on Wednesday, April the 10th for spaghetti dinner, followed by a live auction for various homemade desserts. I am looking for Tim Chandler. Uh, okay, I hope he's there. All right, so our tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for children. You can scan the QR code or you can be like my mother who will not be named and have to get their tickets by hand outside the main office. Our preschool Bibles, each year the LUMC preschool gives their four-year-old graduating class Bibles for their own. If you would like to support our efforts and purchase a Bible, they are $12 each. Please make your check payable to the LUMC preschool and drop it in the offering plate. You are invited. The children of Joyce Clark are having a 90th birthday party drop in on Saturday, April the 6th from 2 to excuse me, from 2 to 4 in Asbury Hall. No gifts, please. Just come and celebrate Joyce on her special day. Our church offices will be closed on Monday, April 1st for the Easter holiday and this is not an April Fools joke. It really will be closed. Our children's corner, of course, we're going to have our butterfly release after the 11 o'clock Easter worship service. Uh, grown-ups, responsible grown-ups, we need you. Volunteers are still needed for Sunday, April the 7th. Sign up um, at the QR code on the back of your bulletin. 
Uh, there will be no children's program this Sunday evening. Enjoy Easter Sunday. Evening with your family. Go find Easter eggs, eat ham, asparagus, mac and cheese, and deviled eggs. That's what we're having if you'd like to come to our house. We will resume our meetings on April the 14th. There are a couple summer camps, June the 24th, from the 24th through the 27th, 9 to noon. It's a creation care camp. Um, if you would like any information or to register, please see Heather for that one. And the preschool will also have a nature camp running the same week uh, for our youngest friends. Uh, adult volunteers are needed, so please contact Heather. Now, I know that this is my last time reading the announcements, and some of you are like, yes, she's done. That would be my mother. Um, and there are others of you who might be a little sad, so don't worry. I'll be signing autographs right out here um, at the end of the service today. And look, I show up here, too. So I, I tried to get you all out of here before the Baptist at lunchtime. <laughs> I tried, y'all. Go ahead. <laughs> so our Lenten reading for today, the light which the world tried to extinguish cannot be put out. Today the candles burn brightly, proclaiming the transforming power of God. The light has returned, and we give thanks that God's transforming love has been is now and will ever be at work within us. Today we celebrate new life, new joy, new possibilities. Christ is alive and living among us. We acknowledge that there is still pain and suffering in the world, but we place our trust in God and in the way shown by Jesus Christ. In the midst of darkness, there is light. In the pain of death, there is life. In the face of what appears to us to be overwhelming odds, God is at work in us and in the world, working for justice and peace, compassion and love, and life abundant. Christ is risen. Christ is risen in us. For wherever we gather in his name, he is here. And all God's people say together, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. All right, I'd like to invite the children to come down front with me this morning. I'm going to strongly encourage you to come because we're doing something a little different and you're, wanna, you're going to want to be able to see it. Come on, children. Come sit down here. While the children are gathering, congregation, this morning I need your help to tell our story. So if you'll look under the wonder baskets of your pew, which is a little gray basket at the end, there are pieces of paper of all different colors. Pat, take one, pass it down. No, there's not enough for everybody because that's a lot of paper. But um, if those of you who have paper beside you, if you will pass it down, take one and pass it down. <laughs> All right, friends, I'm going to move out of your way. Now, grown-ups, we're going to practice something here. When you hear your color, now right now you're just going to do it because I'm not going to read all the colors off. But when you hear your color, you're going to hold your paper up like this. Can everybody hold their paper up like this? Keep it up. Kids, look behind you too. There's more. All right, put your paper down. When you hear your color red, I would like you to hold the paper up until that sentence is finished. So you got to pay close attention. <laughs> um, and you guys are going to get to see the story as a visual, too. So the congregation is going to help us tell the story this morning. But remember, part of it's behind you. Early on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and her friends got up while it was still black. It was black as night to go to the place where Jesus was buried. It was so quiet. Hardly a bird was singing yet. They all felt sad because their friend had died. They walked down the dusty brown path telling each other stories about Jesus. They remembered the times they followed him to the countryside they remembered the time he sat on a green, green hillside and taught people. 
They remembered the time that there was not enough food to eat, only five loaves and two fishes. But when Jesus blessed the food, there was enough for everybody. Soon they reached the garden where Jesus' body had been put in a tomb with a big stone rolled over to cover the entrance. They found the gray stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were trying to figure out what had happened, they saw a young man in a white robe. The women were terrified, and the man said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. Look, there's the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. As they left the tomb filled with terror and amazement, in the garden, the yellow sun and the clear blue sky, and they noticed the beautiful pink, purple, and red of the flowers. And even now, all these years later, we remember how they went to the tomb and found it empty. We celebrate Easter Sunday with flowers of all colors. We give thanks to Jesus who rose that day. We give thanks to God and say, Hallelujah, he lives. And we wait. Because this is just the beginning again of this great, mysterious, wonderful story that's made alive in us. Congregation, if you'll all hold your colors up again. God's big, beautiful world is all around us, and we are a part of this story. Let's pray together. Hallelujah, God. You live. You are here among us right now. We praise you this Easter. Hallelujah. And because you live, we know and love you in a new way. Amen. Blessed with our anthem from the chancel choir before the throne of God above. Thank you, choir. Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God Justice satisfied to 
Whether you've been here before or not, in this sanctuary, you are invited when the time comes for us to share the elements of juice and bread to come forward because this is an open table. You are invited to come forward because Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So together let us go in silent confession to the Lord, confessing our individual sins. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the bread of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving at a as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ come in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, would the three people that have been designated to help with communion please come forward. Stacy instead of two, will that work? Okay. All right, so Pastor needs him to give you to over here. And then uh, same thing with me in the middle. Your mom and dad on the side. And then three Stacy. So Lord, we don't presume to come to this your table trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We're not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, Lord, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to grant grace and mercy. So grant us gracious mercy so as to be washed through the sacrifice of your son so that our sinful bodies might be made clean and that we may evermore dwell in him. Because there is one loaf we who are many are one body, for we all partake of that same one love. Behold, this is Christ's body given for you and I. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Behold, Christ's blood shed for you and I. So we will have three stations for communion, one in the middle, one on the right, and one on the left. And as you come forward after those who are supporting the service have been served, then the ushers will guide you. You come down the center aisle and then proceed back by the side aisle. Christ's dinner is prepared. Come forward and share in Christ's body. Thanks be to God.
at Easter time for communion, especially, I always feel like we should have that McDonald's sign that says, billions and billions served, amen. <laughs> and yet, here we are, and everyone was served, and, and Christ is our awesome Lord, amen. amen. Praise God for that. We just start our praises and prayers off by praising God that we are all here together as brothers and sisters this morning, what a blessing it is. Look around at all the people that we have here this morning. And the Lord watched over every one of us while we were sleeping, woke each of us up and brought us here and protected us. And our God is an awesome God. So we praise God for all the ways that we have been blessed. And we also have those who are suffering. Uh, so we lift them up in our prayers this morning that the Lord bless them. Our deepest sympathies to David Marshall and his family in the passing of his brother Donald. And he is uh, preparing arrangements for that later in this coming week. We have our deepest sympathies um, to all those friends and family of Charles Baxley, including Phil Gaines, who is uh, Charles' friend, and Charles has passed. And our sympathies are to all. We lift up Lucille Steins' family as she is ailing in the hospital and the Trudy Huffstetler is there with her along the, with the rest of her family and it is a tough time for them so they are in our prayers this morning. We lift up Joseph Ness, Craig and Sari's son who had a bad fall and required some stitches and some dental work and his swelling is slowly going down and he is recovering, praise God. We lift up also in our prayers, Jeff Numberger, who is at hospice care in NHC Healthcare. He is the brother of Jeannie and Joyce, and so this is a tough time for them to have their brother in hospice, and he is sleeping a lot there, and we just lift him up and all those who are grieving for his suffering. We lift up Robbie Lyles, who is recovering from a heart ablation. Reverend David Clyburn, who has had some dizziness but is doing better. Tommy Taylor, who has had some health issues. Pat O'Kane's son and children. Joyce Bumgarner, who wanted to be with you all this morning but is not feeling well, so she did not come to the service this morning and is at home recovering. We lift up so many others in our prayers who are suffering this morning, and so as we lift them all up, we go to the Lord asking for them to be healed. So would you join me in prayer as we pray to our Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless all these in our spoken and unspoken prayers, please. That they feel your healing power and presence, your grace, your mercy, and your love, and that you bless them with full recovery. For those who are grieving, lost loved ones and friends, we ask you to touch their hearts and show them the promise of eternal life. And we pray all of this in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward? <laughs>
have given to us, and as we return our gifts to you, guide us to use these for the neediest of your people. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the mighty gospel of John's 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18. Hear now God's word. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. But Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. seated. So Mary Magdalene came running to the disciples to bring them some news. This morning we share good news, good news of Christ rising, but think about the awful news that she had to bring to them first. She had to tell them that Jesus' body was missing. They didn't know where it was. They were sure it had been stolen. So she went and she told them that they were gone, and immediately they took off, running to the tomb. John, the younger of the two, got there first. He outran Peter, and stooping down, he looked into the tomb, and he observed the burial clothes lying there where the body of Jesus had been. And from his angle of observation, he probably thought that the body was still there. So he hesitated. He didn't go inside. But Peter went right in. You know Peter. Peter is very impetuous. He had to get in there and see for himself. And sure enough, he got in and looked. And he saw the burial cloth and the, the shroud, which had been around Jesus' head, lying in a, ple a place by itself. And then John came in after him. And they looked around. And this is where John writes probably about 50 years later after this time. He writes in his account that when he saw the cloths, he believed. But you have to ask, at, at that point, what did he believe? Probably what he believed right then and there, those 50 years earlier, when it really happened, was that Mary was correct, that the body had been stolen. That's probably what he thought. Because it says in Scripture, it says, for as yet they did not understand from the Scriptures that he must rise from the dead. So they weren't counting on that 
body being gone from a resurrection, they thought it had been taken. That's what they believed right there. And they went back home. But Mary stayed. Mary had been in the background outside the tomb. She didn't go inside. She remained out there. And she's thinking that Jesus' body has been stolen. And then she sees two young men, two angels. In the morning light, it probably looked like they were looking right past her to someone behind her. So she turns around and there she sees someone that she thinks is the gardener. And he also asks her, woman, why are you weeping? But then when he says her name, she knows who it is. You ever get a call from someone, but they, they use a different phone, they borrow somebody's phone, and so it looks like one person's calling on your cell phone, but as soon as you hear that voice, you know who it really is, amen? That's what happened for Mary. She knew it was Jesus when she heard his voice say her name. So she cries out in Aramaic, calling him teacher. She throws herself at his feet, and then he tries to disengage himself from her and say that I have not yet ascended to the Father. What he's trying to do is explain to Mary, but also to you and I, that a change has just come on. And what that is is that he's no longer only accessible in a physical form in front of one person at one time. But the difference is that now he's ascending to his father and all people can access him at all times. Big change. We celebrate usually on Easter only thinking that because Jesus has risen for us, we have something waiting for us at the end of our lives. And, and surely that is part of the Easter message that we have eternal life through belief and faith in Jesus Christ. But that's not what comforted them that morning. What comforted them that morning was to see their friend and to think immediately, Jesus is back again. And Jesus is back again and we haven't lost him and he will always be here with us. A sovereign God, an authoritative God, a powerful God. Think about what confusion would have stayed. What a confusing time it would be for us now if Jesus had remained only in human form in person here. Do you think you and I would ever get a chance to squeeze through the crowds and see him? What is, what is the largest form of religion in the world? Christianity. There are millions of Christians. And as the sun was in each part of the world this morning as a sunrise, each part of the world that had Christians in it was so grateful this morning for Christ rising. But if Jesus was only in a human form, how would we ever get to be with him? Maybe once or twice he'd appear on a Facebook Live. <laughs> Might have an interview on, on X. <laughs> Maybe he'd try and do a, a news interview with Fox News and CNN, but the, no room would be big enough to hold all the reporters who wanted to ask a question. They'd all be thrusting microphones at Jesus, all speaking and yelling out at the same time, and whatever he did finally manage to say would get misinterpreted, amen? <laughs> it wouldn't work. So he gave us something greater than that. He's accessible to you and I right now without any confusion, without any misunderstanding. You have Jesus with you right now. Anything that you want to know, you go to Jesus in prayer, and Jesus is there because Jesus has the power to touch you and be with you every minute of your life. Amen? That's what we really celebrate this morning. That's the promise that we have because Jesus lives. There's a song you probably heard somewhere along the line that talks about because he lives. And if you hear a word or two that is familiar to you, won't you sing it along with me? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. He truly lives. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. So God bless our Easter because Jesus has given us a whole new power of access to our Lord. And so won't you then please stand in our closing hymn, number 307, Christ is Risen.
As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? So I ask you, congregation, members of the household of God, I commend Joe Broadway to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God 